Als nächster Punkt der Tagesordnung folgt die gemeinsame Aussprache zum Thema Fit for 55, Bericht von Herrn Liese über die Überarbeitung des Emissionshandelssystems der EU, den Bericht von Herrn Liese über die Überwachung von Treibhausgasemissionen aus dem Seeverkehr, Berichterstattung darüber und Prüfung dieser Emissionen, der Bericht von Herrn Kaim über den CO2-Grenzausgleichsmechanismus, den Bericht von Herrn Kasa und Frau Esther de Lange über den Klimasozialfonds und den Bericht von Frau Klawak über Erarbeitung des Emissionshandelssystems der EU für die Luftfahrt. Über alle diese Berichte diskutieren wir jetzt gemeinsam und den Reigen der Redner eröffnet Peter Liese. Liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, am 14. Juli 2021 ereignete sich in Europa, auch in meinem Heimatland, eine fürchterliche Katastrophe. Durch Starkregen und Überschwemmung haben über 200 Menschen innerhalb von 24 Stunden ihr Leben verloren. Das erste Opfer war in meinem Wahlkreis in der Stadt Altena ein Feuerwehrmann, der gerade anderen das Leben gerettet hat und dann selber in den Fluten umkam. Als ich später mit dem Bürgermeister die Stelle besichtigt habe, wo das passiert ist, lief es mir kalt den Rücken runter. Diese Flutkatastrophe war eines der vielen Zeichen, dass der Klimawandel nicht mehr nur die Menschen auf den kleinen Inseln im Pazifik betrifft, sondern leider bei uns angekommen ist. Und deswegen müssen wir handeln. Deswegen war es auch gut, dass exakt an diesem Tag, am 14. Juli 2021, die Europäische Kommission das Fit for 55-Paket vorgestellt hat. Der Emissionshandel ist das Kernelement dieses Fit for 55-Pakets. Und alleine der ETS 1 bringt 25 Mal so viel CO2-Reduktion wie die umstrittene Regelung zum CO2-Ausstoß von PKWs für unser 2030-Ziel. Das Signal ist klar, alle, die sich für den Klimaschutz engagieren, Privatleute und Unternehmen, können ihre Ideen einbringen und werden profitieren. Auch den Seeverkehr haben wir nach vielen Diskussionen einbezogen. Aber es gab natürlich auch Herausforderungen im Verhandlungsprozess. Wir wollen die Arbeitsplätze in der Industrie erhalten. Wir wollen Europa nicht deindustrialisieren, sondern die europäische Industrie dekarbonisieren. Und nur so sind wir auch Vorbild für andere Teile der Welt. Deswegen brauchen wir Schutz vor Carbon Leakage. Und wir haben unter anderem einen Mechanismus eingeführt, der die Industrie, aber auch die Bürgerinnen und Bürger in den schwierigen Zeiten, in denen wir leben, wo wir auch russisches Gas teilweise durch Kohle ersetzen müssen, Luft zum Atmen gibt. Ich bin dankbar, dass weite Teile der Industrie den Prozess konstruktiv begleitet haben und am Ende jetzt auch zustimmen, obwohl wir insgesamt bis 2030 die Ambition sogar erhöht haben. Besonders energisch haben wir gestritten über das neue ETS 2 für Wärme- und Straßenverkehr. Viele haben es zunächst abgelehnt. Ich bin sehr, sehr dankbar, dass es uns gelungen ist, mit vielen aus der Wissenschaft, aus den Umweltverbänden und den Wirtschaftsverbänden einen Kompromiss hinzubekommen, der im Vergleich zum Kommissionsvorschlag sogar noch ambitionierter ist, weil er die Prozessemissionen mit einbezieht, der aber auch sozial ausgewogener ist als das, was ursprünglich auf dem Tisch lag. Wir haben einen Preisdeckelmechanismus beschlossen. Wir haben den Klimasozialfonds im Vergleich zum Rat deutlich erhöht. Und was noch viel wichtiger ist, wir haben eine Verpflichtung für die Mitgliedstaaten beschlossen, dass auch die anderen Mittel, die etwa doppelt so hoch sind wie der Klimasozialfonds, zielgerichtet ausgegeben werden müssen und soziale Aspekte dabei berücksichtigt werden müssen. Das war für mich insgesamt auch der größte Durchbruch. Auch beim ETS 1, die Mittel müssen zielgerichtet ausgegeben werden. Und ab morgen müssen wir dem Geld folgen und schauen, dass die Mitgliedstaaten das auch wirklich umsetzen. Finally, I want to thank all those who helped. I cannot name them all, but I want to name a few. Sorry, Esther de Lange and uh, David Kaza, Rapporteurs for the Social Climate Fund. Of course, Mohammed, my shadow from S&D and the Rapporteur for CBAM and Sunchana Glavak for the ETS Aviation. But more important, 
a big thank you to our staff that worked tirelessly. I conclude, dear colleagues, many said we have crisis, it's no time for climate action. We proved them wrong. To get rid of the dependency from Russia and others, to keep the prices under control in the long term and to fight climate, we need to get rid of fossil fuels and the ETS is the main tool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter Liese, nun ist der bereits bedankte nächste Berichterstatter am Wort, Mohamed Shahim. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much, President. Uh, as the CBAM rapporteur, I am proud to be standing here and I can say that it has not been an easy ride, but we've made it. At least let's hope tomorrow we will vote in favor and that the Council sticks to the agreement. The Green Deal is at the heart of, the social, dem of social democracy. Because it's not only about reaching our goal, it's also about the path towards this goal, leaving no one behind. And during the European electional, electoral campaign, we promised to deliver on a social and ecological transition. And today, we take a major step in fulfilling our promise. I am proud of SND. We have never walked away from the negotiations. We always took responsibility and did not hide behind any other political group. Dear President, I would like to thank my colleagues for the good cooperation, all of them, and the Secretariat of the Parliament, advisors and assistants for the outstand outstanding work, and I think the Czech Presidency for rising above themselves. And let me not forget the Commission for providing us with the necessary information and being an honest broker. The agreement reached between the Parliament and Member States on ETS, CBAM, and the Social Climate Fund are historic. Historic because for the first time, sorry, <clears throat> because they will bring us to our 2030 climate target as set in the climate law. Historic because for the first time, the highly polluting maritime sector is included. Historic because we will create a level playing field between EU producers and non-EU producers and finally respecting the polluter pace principle. And historic because we will fund the energy transition for households and help them decrease their energy bill. ETS has been and will be the most efficient and cost-effective way to incentivize decarbonization. The system creates a clear framework under which our producers can distinguish themselves from bad or underperformers. For the first time in history, the free allowances, basically a right to pollute for free, will be conditioned and eventually phased out. Those companies that do not show progress and thus do not have the intention to decarbonize will have no future in the EU. And it sounds hard, but we have to be very clear about it. They should not abuse our subsidies and allowances because they, these limited funds should be used for others that do have the will to invest in clean technologies and help us keep the EU competitive. It is time to separate between the unwilling and the willing, between those with good intentions and those with bad intentions. And with the introduction of CBAM, this will also become applicable for producers outside the EU. You are still welcome to sell your products on the EU market, but we will stop the unfair competition compared to our producers. You will pay for your pollution at the border. And let me be very clear, we are not in it for the money. I don't care about the money. I really hope that the revenues of CBAM go to zero as quick as possible, because this means that producers outside the EU either already pay an equivalent CO2 price in their own region, or they became fully decarbonized. Let us start shaping the future of, clean, of a clean, competitive EU industry today. Let us vote in favour of these legislative files. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. And the next speaker is Mr. David Kasa. Please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. The debate is the same thing about the story and the legislative deal for climate u għafos tlakbar sfidi għall-umanita u għallura jirikjedi ambizzjoni gbira. Il-Parlament Europeu kien obligat jagġixi u kello jaraf dawn l-sfidi kolla u joffri soluzzjoni aċċettabli u effettiva b-risposta l-ċittadini, l-għvernijiet u l-komunita internazjonali. Dawn l-sfidi indirizzaj njom u bil-votti għawada dan il-Parlament jistajala proċess l-dam senaw nofs. Sur President, 
fuq il-mejda għan-naftijim li jindirizza aspetti importanti għall-industria Ewropea, li jindirizza aspetti importanti soċjali u fuq kolloġ li jizom l-ambizzjoni biex niġġildu l-effetti tat-tibdil tal-klima. U kif naħfu l-effetti mu miġbis ambjentali. Bħalma il-pandemija ma kiniġbis marda medika imma ġabet maħħa sintomi soċjali, ekku kol l-tibdil tal-klima kapaċi ġib mal-temp għal-familji taħna, għal-ħaddima taħna, għal-lizar intrapprizi taħna, dawk illi aħna n-qisu bħala issisin tal-soċjeta tal-ekonomija Ewropea. Infakkar, illi jekk il-pandemija għaffet wat li l-kulħat mux kulħat tintlaqat xorta, imma uma dawk illi dejjem għandom l-inqas illi sofru l-akbar impat fil-soċjeta taħna. Kienet priorita l-lura għal-parlament li l-indirizzaw din il-realta u li man ħallu l-ħatt ifendi għal-rasu. Il-fond soċjali għal-klima u għal-prodott ta' sena u nofs xol ta' negoziati ibsin u konsultazzjoni wisa u għaftijim illi jirrapprezenta battalja ibsa mal-kunsil izzaw kol rezultat illi kiseb bilanċ ta' jieb ħafna u bilanċ illi jizgura fond effettif. Fil-fond soċjali għal-klima għanna investiment ta' 6.80.7 biljon euro biex ikunu investiti fil-djar u fl-izar negozi madwa l-Europa. Senaraw investimenti fil-tool, pal solar panels, insulazzjoni jahjar u waktar efficienza fil-energija, senaraw transport aktar sostenibli, investimenti li jiqpaw rendu l-benefiċja ċittadini taħna, li jaqtaw il-konsum tal-energija, li jaqtaw l-emissjonijiet u t-nidġis u li jaqtaw u kol il-konti jittaddaw. U fejn emzon għanna mizuri bħal support bitħul diret bix napod ġaw l-dawk il-familju negoċ jizar bmizuri limitati sa kem l-investimenti fit-tool ikunu jistaw jihdu għaffet. Iva kontent li l-nexxilna insaħu l-involvimenta li nħsiba soċjali. Kontent li l-fond se jaslu fej liktar għandom, liktar bżon l-andom, bżon liktar impat. Kontent li akwestajna rata ta konfinanzjament u li kienu kolla rebħiet tuħu li negozjati taħna. Irrit najti li negozjati kienu komplessi, kelna bosta sfidi tuħu li proċess, imma kelna team straordinarju li wassalna sawn. Irrit ni graċja la unnet il-prezidenza ċeka tal-kooperazzjoni taħħa, l-prezidenza zvediza li maħħa laħna dan il-proċess, l-Kommissjoni Ewropea tal-assistenza taħħa u fuq kollu xie team tal-parlamentari, tal-rapporters, shadow rapporters, kolla u l-advisors u segretariati u l-membri kolla tal-appoċ taħħum tul dawn l-aħħarxur b-mot partikulari il-co-rapporter li kelli miħaj esse delan illi miħaj ħadmed biex nassiguraw dan l-allanġament. Biex ni konkludi, għanna kizba soċjali sinifikanti fond ta' biljuni b-investimenti li se jizgura li transizzjoni klimatika ija verament wahda soċjali. Grazie għafna. Ďakujem veľmi pekne a ďalšie vystúpi spravodajkynia pani Ester de Lange. Prosím, máte slovo. Thank you, Mr. President. As co-rapporteur, David again, thank you, co-rapporteur of the Social Climate Fund, am I proud of the agreement reached? Yes. And I thank in particular the whole team of shadows, both of the Environment and the Employment Committees, as well as the representatives of the Budget Committee, who fought their ground very hard. I think we managed to strike a deal that reflects the priorities of all those committees. We ensured that the fund kicks in before the extension of the ETS does, and that the majority of funding is spent as structural measures and investments for building renovation and zero and low emission transport, which will of course have the biggest cl uh, climate and environmental impact. The fund will target vulnerable households and transport users including the lower and middle income ones in cities as well as in rural areas. And although the fund will be initially financed through external revenue at the explicit request of the Council, it should be part of the next multi-annual financial framework. And, as least as important, we brought back national co-financing against the wish of this same Council, resulting in a total budget of 87 billion euros. But let's be clear. We in this room, we might be relieved that the negotiating process is over. But this is no laughing matter. 
High energy prices are still keeping Europeans awake at night. And the social impact of this climate transition is much bigger than this limited fund. To address this, member states and the EU level need to work hand in hand and spending from our European budget should be much more focused on the real priorities, including a fair climate transition for all. But that, I admit, is a discussion for the next budget. In all together, ETS, CBAM and the Social Climate Fund form the core, or as a Christian Democrat, I might say the holy trinity of the Fit for 55 package. Is this deal needed? Yes, it is, because without it, we would not reach the CO2 reduction we need to pass this planet on to the next generation as good stewards. Is it enough? Well, let me say the following, and I was a bit surprised to see our, our economic and financial commissioner in this climate uh, debate. But you're from Italy, so you're from, like me, from a seafaring uh, nation historically. Let me say that this deal is the compass. We've put a mark on the horizon and we now, need, uh, we now know where to go by 2050 in terms of CO2 reduction. But any experienced navigator knows that a compass alone is not enough uh, to be successful. Secondly, you need to know where you are at this wide and often wild sea. Uh, this is where CBAM kicks in. Uh, it, uh, international competition is not always fair. And although CBAM is a very important step, the Commission needs to be flexible enough to react when the international waters change and more might be needed. And thirdly, a good seafarer makes sure that he has no mutiny on his ship. And we need to make sure that we have no mutiny on the EU ship, that we bring our citizens along in this transition. We've said it as EPP in the beginning, two years ago of uh, this debate, if the Green Deal does not provide jobs in Europe, it will not be successful. And therefore, I want these electrical buses that we need uh, to be made in Europe and not in China if the competition from China is not fair. And therefore, I want the social impact of this transition to be addressed. And therefore, in this way, uh, we might feel like it's the end of a long process. No blood was involved, but for sure, sweat and tears. But it's actually only the beginning because for this strategic industrial policy that we also need, we're still looking at the Commission. The beginning is there with your proposals for the Net Zero Industry Act, but more n m might need to be done. So I hate to say, but let's get back to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the next question is from Ms. Sunčana Glavak. Please, you have the floor. Hvala lijepa predsjedavajući, poštovani povjereniče. Kolegice i kolege, klimatske promjene predstavljaju jasno je globalni izazov i već su utjecale na živote ljudi na svim kontinentima i to je vrlo jasno i bila je potrebna globalna akcija i suradnja za ublažavanje učinaka klimatskih promjena. Kada govorimo o zrakoplovnom sektoru, emisije iz zrakoplovnog sektora u Evropi porasle su u prosjeku za 5% na godišnjoj razini između 2013. i 2019. Iako su se naravno značajno smanjile tijekom COVID-19 pandemije, predviđa se da će one i dalje rasti. Kako bismo postigli klimatsku neutralnost, Europska unija jasno je treba smanjiti emisije iz prometa, uključujući i one iz zrakoplovstva, a upravo povećana klimatska ambicija zrakoplovnog sektora ključna je za postizanje klimatskih ciljeva u skladu s Pariškim sporazumom te za pretvaranje Europskog zelenog plana u našu stvarnost. Od početka našeg procesa pregovora isticala sam kako su potrebne konkretne i primjerene mjere za smanjenje emisije iz rakoplovstva kako bismo bili usklađeni i sa Europskim zakonom o klimi te obvezama iz Pariškog sporazuma. ETS Aviation izvješćem usklađujemo zrakoplovni sektor s našim klimatskim ciljevima. Međutim, unutar tog procesa prioritet je bio i ponuditi rješenja za dekarbonizaciju sektora. Svima nam je jasno da se moramo usredotočiti na naše klimatske ciljeve, ali jednako tako ne možemo dozvoliti da industrija podnese sav taj teret. Moramo se usmjeriti na očuvanje mobilnosti i naše industrije. 
Klub zastupnika IPP-a, o tome je govorila kolegica Delange malo prije, već godinama o tome govori i bio je istinski zato da se cijeli proces pregovora o Fit for 55 paketu dovede do kraja i mislim da je ovo dobar smjer. Jednako tako željeli smo opipljiva rješenja koje odražavaju ravnotežu u pogledu naših klimatskih ambicija i podrške industriji u ovoj tranziciji, posebno uzimajući u obzir trenutne okolnosti. Isto se odnosi i na sektor zrakoplovstva, u sklopu kojeg smo postigli dobar kompromis o ITS zrakoplovstvu. Hvala prije svega Peteru, hvala Ester, ali naravno mojim kolegama, hvala Milan, Klaudija, Bas, Silvija, Ana, hvala puno na pomoći. Sretna sam što smo uspjeli pružiti konkretan alat za pomoć dekarbonizaciji sektora, namjenjenom preko 20 milijuna emisijskih jedinica, koje će biti dostupne kada se koriste održiva zrakoplovna goriva. Ovom odlukom dajemo do znanja zrakoplovnom sektoru da smo uz njih u procesu zelene tranzicije i potičemo brže i šire korištenje održivih zrakoplovnih goriva. Također, svi smo bili svjesni činjenice da se od ukupnog iznosa emisijskih jedinica u zrakopnovnom sektoru veliki dio dodjeljuje besplatno. Postupno ukidanje besplatnih emisijskih jedinica i prelazak na 100% dražbovanje unutar sektora je realnost, nešto što ne možemo izbjeći, ali naša je dužnost bila odabrati pravi tempo kojim ćemo to učiniti. Trenutno ukidanje besplatnih emisijskih jedinica naravno nije bilo rješenje i zato smo donijeli odluku kojim će se besplatne emisijske jedinice ukinuti 2026. Želim spomenuti emisije koje nisu CO2 kao jednu važnu temu ovog izvješća, budući da one pokrivaju dvije trećine emisija iz zrakoplostva. Dogovoreno je kako će se uvijesti novi sustav za praćenje, izvješćivanje i verifikaciju emisija koje nisu CO2. Što se tiče opsega, kada govorimo o smanjenju emisija, želim naglasiti potrebu za snažnijom korsijom koja odgovara svojoj svrsi i koja mora biti dio rješenja i zato stavljamo veći pritisak na IKO kako bismo osigurali da korsija postane uspješni dio naših rješenja jer ne možemo biti sami u ovom kontekstu, moramo djelovati zajedno u pogledu postizanja klimatskih ciljeva. Kolegice i kolege, želim još jednom istaknuti kako mi isporučujemo rezultate naših obećanja oko klimatskih ciljeva, ali vodimo računa o realnim mogućnostima i u tom pogledu imamo na umu našu industriju. Na kraju, da bi Evropski zeleni plan mogao funkcionirati u praksi, mora postati uspješna priča za naše građane i tvrtke. ETS is opportunity, ETS is game changer. So, let's go. Thank you very much. Ďakujem veľmi pekne.